In this screencast, we're going to talk about a fundamental design practice which covers almost all software engineering and certainly all digital design, the idea of hierarchy. Within digital design, we often concern ourselves with the development of fairly large, complex systems. Take the hack computer from semester one as an example. From a top-level black box perspective, we only really care about what it does as opposed to how it does it. We've got a single input to reset it and some way of reading the output. If we take the lid off the black box, we can see that it's made of three major parts, the instruction memory, the data memory, and the CPU, which is fine, but if we wanted to implement this in Verilog, we couldn't really just type CPU and have it work, so we need to drill down further. Inside the CPU, we can see a collection of multiplexers, registers, counters, and an ALU, which, as you found out last year, consists of both a logical and an arithmetic unit, the latter of which is a collection of full adders, each of which consists of a collection of logic gates wired up to produce a sum and carry signal. If we take these different levels of abstraction and see how they connect, we're actually looking at the hierarchy of our design. At the top is our complex system, the full hack computer, and as we move down the tree through the different levels of abstraction, our designs get simpler and simpler until we arrive at the most basic level, the gate primitives. So hierarchical design concerns just this. It's the breaking down of a system into different levels of abstraction, where each level is constructed using designs from lower levels. So why do we use hierarchical design? Firstly, it's a really good way to simplify what we're doing. Instead of having to design everything from gate and register level all the time, we can abstract away the more fine grain elements and package them up into something that makes a bit more sense. This packaging up leads to systems being a lot more modular, so we separate elements of the design out into different files which represent specific parts of the system. This separation makes everything easier to read. We're not putting tens or hundreds of thousands of lines of code in a single Verilog file. Instead, we build projects of many modules contributing to a single overall design. This makes the individual modules much easier to test. As you'll discover in the next lab session, we verify our designs on a module-by-module -module basis so we can guarantee they work when integrated into either the design they were built for or a later design, which brings me on to my final point, reusability. Reusability is a fundamental aspect of digital design and one of the key benefits of a modular hierarchical design strategy. Reusability is the idea that we can take the modules that we've developed, tested and verified and easily transplant them into another system. Locally, this means that designers can construct solutions for parts or design elements and use them multiple times, whether that be within a single system or across many projects. This, of course, shortens the design times on future projects which may share similar elements. It also allows multiple designers to easily work on a single design across many versions over many years. If you have elements which are well documented, they can be treated as a black box and integrated by any designer into a system. Commercially, this idea of packaging up designs into abstract modules means that they can be bought and sold as licensed intellectual property. The independence of hardware definition languages from device architecture means that designers can create a design for a dedicated function, such as an FFT engine, an HDMI interface, or even full CPUs, and it can be used on pretty much any FPGA device with the required resources. The buyer will be given an API and documentation of how the IP works, along with its physical requirements and constraints, and then it's up to them to implement it in whatever system they require. This has led to an entire industry based on designing and selling third-party IP. Take ARM, for example. Over 40% of all mobile devices around the world run on an ARM processor, but ARM themselves have never produced a single physical chip. They license their architecture to physical device manufacturers such as Qualcomm, Apple and NXP who bundle that processor core onto a device along with some other features and peripherals to create a full system on chip which can either be implemented in their own technologies or sold on to someone else. So we now need to see how to implement hierarchical design within our Verilog projects. We've already made a start on this process with the use of modules. Modules are the basic building blocks of hierarchy, where each module pertains to a specific function within the design. Modules can be created inside of each other as submodules to build towards that function through a process called instantiation.
By instantiating a module, we add it into our parent module as a black box and connect up the inputs and output ports as necessary. Eventually, we end up with our complete design as a hierarchy, with a single module at the top, known as the top level entity, instantiating the next level of abstraction, and so on and so forth. In Verilog, we can implement hierarchical design by instantiating submodules within our modules. We design everything from the bottom up, meaning that you can't instantiate a module that does not yet exist. It needs to be created first. In the example here, module A will become our submodule, so it will have already been designed, tested, and verified as fit for purpose. We can instantiate module A in module B using the format you can see here. It's similar to calling a function in C++, except instead of passing parameters, we're wiring up ports between the modules. We connect these ports in the order that they appear in the submodules interface, so we need to pay close attention to what each does and where it's going. Once this system has been compiled, we can see in the RTL that our top-level module, module B, instantiates two instances of module A, and we can expand to see the gate-level RTL of the submodules. In the next screencast, I'll be running through a guided example of hierarchical design, so we can get hands-on experience of how this works.